Hey guys, it's Miss Batty here, back with Lesson 6 on our Populations and Resources series. I hope that you've been starting to feel like you're figuring out about some things that could be going on with the moon jelly populations. We've collected a lot of evidence so far, and I'm really excited to start hearing your thinking in today's lesson. What you're going to need for the lesson today is a pencil or pen, some lined or blanked paper, now, if you have the packet pages that go with this lesson, you may also want to get those out right now. Something that's optional, but that I encourage you if you have the ability to do so, would be to get logged on to Amplify and open up the Populations and Resources Digital Model. You need to pause the video for a moment to make sure that you can get there. Go ahead. If you don't have access, no worries, we are gonna do this together. As I mentioned before, we have collected a lot of evidence and figured out some really key ideas about how populations change or stay the same over time. We know that within a population, organisms are always born and always dying. This means that even when a population is staying the same, something is being added or taken away. It is just balanced. A system can be stable even as things are being added to or removed from it. If the amounts being added and removed are not equal, then the system will change. We saw this with our populations and resources game and with our video with the tanks of water. If the number of births and deaths in a given time are equal, then the population size will be stable. If there are more births and deaths in a given time, then the size of the population will increase. If there are fewer births than deaths, then the size of the population will decrease. We learned very quickly that the key to population growth or stability is in the ratio of births and deaths. We must look at both sides to understand and make predictions about what is happening in a population. Because of this, we really started diving in to what might be affecting either sides of the ratio. And we figured out that organisms in a population need to release energy from energy storage molecules in order to reproduce, or in other words, give birth. Organisms in these consumer populations get their energy storage molecules from eating something called resource populations. Now we know that some organisms can make their own energy but most need to eat to get these energy storage molecules. The more energy storage molecules available to a population, the more the organisms in that population can reproduce. We saw this with the yeast, with the crickets, and also with the organisms in the digital model. Today, we are going to start shifting to think about the other side of the ratio, our death rates. We know that the moon jelly population is increasing. This means that the number of births is outweighing the number of deaths. Now our question is, why is this occurring? We've looked at how the number of births might be able to increase. What if it's that the number of deaths are just decreasing? Today, we are going to collect evidence for why and how the number of deaths might change in a population. This was an idea that some of us had from the very beginning. Let's start by thinking about what we're gonna be doing today. In our last lesson, you watched me investigate how the number of births might be changed by planning and carrying out an investigation in the digital model. Today, it is your turn. You will plan and conduct an investigation in the digital model to figure out what can affect the number of births, or sorry, deaths in a population. Again, we are going to use the three populations ecosystem in the middle of the dot digital model options. If you need to pause the video for a moment and get to the digital model, then go ahead and do so. If not, keep following along with me. What you're going to do today is focus your investigations on our wee bug population. 
As we're focusing on the wee bugs, I want you to pause the video for a moment and find a person to check in with or maybe a friend that you can text or message with. And I want you to ask yourself, what is the consumer and the resource populations for the wee bugs? Let's think about that for a moment. Okay, so as we have our food web here, we can see that the energy storage molecules are being transferred this way across our food web, meaning that the green leaves are the resource population for the wee bugs, and the furbles are the consumer population of the wee bugs. The furbles eat the wee bugs, and the wee bugs eat the green leaves. So, you today are going to have to think about what changes are going to decrease the number of deaths in the wee bug population. We know that in the moon jellies, for the balance of births and deaths to become unbalanced, either the births had to increase or the deaths had to decrease or maybe both. So we really want to understand what could cause deaths to decrease. I want you to pause the video again and I want you to discuss with somebody around the house or maybe somebody you can message, what is your prediction or your initial idea for what change might affect and decrease the number of deaths in the wee bug population? Good luck. Okay, so now you're gonna start planning your investigation. As we mentioned last time, you are going to have to pick what your manipulated variable is. You may also have heard of this as being called the independent variable. Now remember, this is the thing that you are going to change. It is the thing that you suspect is going to affect the number of deaths in the wee bug population. Which one did you pick? That is your manipulated variable. Our responding or our dependent variable is going to be the number of wee bug deaths. Now, obviously this is the thing that we are trying to look for and understand. So this is the thing we are going to measure. Our controlled variables are going to be things that we keep the same. If you need a reminder, I encourage you to go back into lesson five to take a look at some of the things that we kept controlled in our test for the number of birth changes. What things do you not want to mess with? We only want to have one manipulated variable or change that you're making so that we really can be sure that this is the thing that is affecting the number of wee bug deaths. If you have access to a digital model, now would be the time to pause the video, plan your investigation, and then carry it out. Make sure to take data and record information about the deaths before and after your change. Figure out whether or not your manipulated variable does cause a change in the deaths of the wee bug populations. Good luck. If not, follow along with me and we are going to plan an investigation together. So I decided that for my manipulated variable, I wanted to change the number of furbles. Now, we all have the same responding variable here. We're all trying to figure out how we can affect the number of deaths in the wee bugs. So that's gonna be the same. For my controlled variables, I am not going to mess with the green leaves at all. I'm gonna keep those the same before and after. I also am going to make sure that I give the same amount of time before and after I make my change so that I can really compare how many deaths occur in an exact amount of time. I'm going to leave about 25 time units for before and after. Now, what kind of change should we do to the furbles? Should we increase them or decrease? Let's see. Hmm. I think that we should try to decrease the number of furbles. I'm thinking that the furbles are eating the wee bugs, and so maybe if there are less of them, then they might not be able to eat as many. 
but it might just mean that because there are less verbals, they're eating more because there are more available. So let's take a look and see what is going on. Okay, so here I am in the digital model in the populations and resources uh, digital model, and I am in the three populations ecosystem. I just am worried about my furbles, my wee bugs, my green leaves, and as you'll see, I haven't messed with anything yet. It's only been two time frames. Um, I am going to leave things alone so that we can kind of get a baseline understanding of how the ecosystem works. And like I said, I want to make sure that I'm doing kind of the same time chunk before and after. So I just picked 25 as my number um, and I'm going to pause it right on 25. And then now things get interesting. So we said that our manipulated variable was going to be affecting the number of furbles in the ecosystem. And our specific change that we are going to make is to decrease the furbles in the ecosystem. And I'm almost going to get rid of them all actually. We'll leave five left. Uh, to see how they can make up for their other organisms that are missing. And I'm gonna lock in the number of furbles. Um, I'm, I'm going to leave the green leaves alone, as we said. I'm going to leave oxygen alone. Just make sure that there's nothing else being changed. Because I really want to understand whether the furbles are affecting things in the wee bug populations. All right, let's go ahead and hit that play. Well, we don't really see any furbles now. Those five look like they're still staying alive, but oh, one just disappeared. Okay, I'm gonna pause there. So that's 50, I let it go for 25 time frames again. So we are going to take a look at the moment uh, at what has happened to the wee bugs. Remember our focus question is, can we affect the number of deaths that are happening? So if we go ahead and take a look um, in the digital model, we're starting with about 110 wee bugs. And over this first little time chunk, that 25 uh, time frames, notice how pretty straight that line is, right? Telling us that the wee bug population is pretty stable during this time. It looks like 32 wee bugs did die in this time frame, but only uh, also 34 were born. So that population ratio of births to death is pretty balanced. Now this is the moment where I made my change. And so we are going to take a look at what starts to happen. Now I can see right away that our light blue line is really, really going up. It is increasing, meaning that our births are really outweighing our deaths. So I wanna go ahead and think about for a moment what we are seeing here. It looks like in this second time frame, actually only 20 of the wee bugs died. 98 were born though. So this is really showing us that this change had a large effect. I mean, if we go right back to this marker, we can see visually a huge change in the pattern of what is happening. And if we look at the number of deaths that were occurring here, around 33 to 35, versus only the 20 that are occurring in this time frame, it is really clear to me that this change in the furble population is having an effect on the amount of deaths that are occurring in the wee bugs. Okay, I'm so glad we got to collect some evidence there. And I really am interested to hear um, from my students and I'm sure your teachers are interested to hear from you about your investigations. There were many different things uh, that you could have chosen to manipulate in the digital model. Um, you could have increased the green leaves, decreased the green leaves, increased or decreased the furbles. 
Now, I chose, as you might know if you stayed along with my investigation, to decrease the number of verbals. And we really saw that this seemed to have an effect on the number of wee bug deaths. We saw that the wee bug deaths decreased. So what I would like you to do is pause your video for a moment. Find that person in your house or get on your chat um, or your text and find that friend and figure out why you think this is happening. We saw that by changing the verbals and decreasing, oops, how many are in the digital model, we affect the number of deaths that the wee bugs are having. Why is this occurring? Using what we understand about how these organisms interact, why might decreasing the verbals have any effect on the number of deaths occurring in the wee bugs? Yes, you guys got it. The larger the consumer population, which was our furbles in this case, the more energy storage molecules it needs. Therefore, it will eat more, causing more deaths in the resource population. We saw the opposite happen. The smaller the consumer population, the less energy storage molecules it will need. Therefore, Overall, that population will eat less and there will be less deaths in the resource population. So there we have it. One way that we can affect the deaths that are occurring in a population is by manipulating the thing that eats it or the consumer population. I wonder if any of your tests also showed that we can affect the number of deaths in a population. I'm really excited to hear some feedback that we can talk about in our next lesson.